Did you know that PETA has killed 41,539 animals, including a dog they stole off of someone's porch? Well, now you do. Here's why. I love dogs. I even have one. Hey Milton, can you say PETA sucks? We're working on it. Let me speak clearly here. I'm not saying that Peter sucks, although I'm sure there's someone named Peter who does. I mean P-E-T-A. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. That is the most misleading name since the movie 88 Minutes actually took 111. The reality is that PETA does not actually treat animals ethically. At all. Let's start with their kill rate. PETA runs an animal shelter in Norfolk, Virginia. That's good, right? Well, it should be. Virginia's private shelters euthanized 4.3% of the dogs they took in in 2019. Those numbers come from Virginia's Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Let's see what PETA's euthanasia rate was. Just slightly higher than 4.3%, at 57%. Yes, if you took a dog into PETA's shelter in 2019, the odds are better that it would be put down than it would be adopted out. Way better, actually, because PETA only adopted out 1.8% of the dogs they took in. The average adoption rate in other Virginia private shelters was 75%. If you brought a dog into PETA's shelter in 2019, it was 30 times more likely to be killed than to be adopted out. Should I stop here? Well, normally I'd be afraid that PETA supporters would release the hounds on me, but PETA's probably already put them down. Want some more statistics? Let's go. The scariest thing is that 2019 was actually PETA's most humane year. Killing 57% of dogs and 72% of cats that came through its doors was actually a huge improvement over its past. PETA had some years where they killed over 97% of the animals that came through. PETA's kill rate topped 90% for six years in a row. Let's look at PETA's self-reported numbers. Since 1998, they've taken 49,737 animals in, and they've killed 41,539 of them. That's an 83.5% kill rate over 20 years. That is not a shelter. That is a slaughterhouse. Well, not really a slaughterhouse. That's unfair. A slaughterhouse doesn't trick people into bringing them cows. And remember, those numbers are according to PETA's own records, or as I like to call them, the PETA files. What possible explanation could PETA have for killing the vast majority of animals in its shelter? A few years ago, Heather Carlson, the manager of communications for PETA, followed me on Twitter. I pressed her on PETA having a kill rate that Jeffrey Dahmer would find excessive. Miss Carlson quickly told me that she was not a spokesperson, despite her Twitter bio saying that she was the manager of communications. Ms. Carlson also told me that PETA sees the worst cases, repeating the story that PETA often feeds to the public. That PETA somehow takes in lost cause animals that other shelters don't want, which is why so many have to be put down. And that would make sense, except it's total bullshit. First of all, PETA has money. PETA raised over $50 million last year, and according to their own numbers, they spent $20 million of that on rescue. How many adoptions did that $20 million fund last year? Just 29. That's about $700,000 per successful adoption. Seems excessive. What are they feeding the dogs? $5 bills? And yes, PETA does transfer some of the animals that they end up not killing to other shelters. So the extremely well-funded PETA transfers some of their allegedly last chance animals to shelters who have less money. And miraculously, those shelters find a way to not kill most of those animals. PETA also is not a national shelter. It's local to Norfolk, Virginia. People don't drive across country to drop off abandoned dogs. They bring them to whatever shelter's closest. Also, other private shelters aren't turning away sick animals in mass. In fact, PETA actually transfers more animals to other shelters than it adopts out. So the idea that they are the animal's last chance is statistically incorrect. Other shelters actually take in PETA animals. Despite what they claim, PETA isn't some sort of a last chance sanctuary. They take whatever animals happen to be given to them, except in the case where they actively kidnap family pets, like they did in 2014 when they tried to coax a family dog off a porch. When the dog wouldn't come down on its own, PETA representatives trespassed and took the dog. They denied it, of course, and it was he said, she said, except the owner had it on film. Now, Virginia has a law requiring shelters to keep animals at least five days before putting them down, so that would have saved the dog. PETA, however, admitted to killing the dog within a few hours of taking it off the porch. And then, PETA tried to settle the matter by giving the family a fruit basket. 
because they are supervillains. Calling PETA supervillains is a bit harsh, until you read why they've been killing so many animals. I don't mean to let the cat out of the bag here, but PETA, please let all your cats out of your bags. In Batman Begins, the plot is that Ra's al Ghul wants to save the citizens of Gotham from crime, and he decides the best way to do that is to kill them all. Sorry if that spoils the plot for you, but that movie is from 2005. That movie is so old, it is old enough to buy its own ticket to see a more recent Batman movie. And what Ra's al Ghul tried to do to Gotham, PETA is doing to animals. Ingrid Newkirk, PETA's founder, told the Washington Post that outdoor cats should be killed rather than left to wander. Now that is a stance others have taken as well, but Newkirk doesn't stop with outdoor cats. Newkirk called having any pet, quote, an abysmal situation. She also said if people want toys, they should buy inanimate objects. If they want companionship, they should seek it with their own kind. And she said, I think it would be lovely if we stopped this whole notion of pets altogether. And that is what PETA is trying to do. They're trying to eliminate pets. PETA believes that dogs like Milton are better off dead than owned by people like you and I. That it is somehow torture to provide dogs with meals, toys, walks, belly rubs, and like eight beds throughout the house. Yeah, Milton has a pretty good life. And yet PETA wants him dead. And they want your dog dead too. I agree with PETA that there are too many animals in shelters. And I agree that plenty of pet owners should not be pet owners. But we can fix those problems without murdering all the animals. As the saying goes, there's more than one way to skin a cat, which is something PETA has probably done. And to make this even more ridiculous, Heather Carlson, remember the manager of communications that somehow isn't a spokesperson? Well, she said she adopted her dogs from PETA. So of the few dozen dogs they actually do adopt out each year to keep the guise of an animal shelter, some of them go to their own damn staff. I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but I also want PETA to stop killing horses. That is a joke. They mainly kill cats and dogs. See, the state of Virginia actually once tried to close PETA's shelter, and various groups have advocated for legally reclassifying PETA to a slaughterhouse. Now that would eliminate PETA's 501c3 status, which they're able to keep because they are classified as a shelter. Now do you see why an organization that tries to eliminate pets helps a few people adopt them? Because it makes their slaughterhouse tax exempt. So why am I making this video? Because I want PETA to stop killing animals. I can't stop them from making horrifying books for children that graphically show animal slaughter. And I can't stop their idiotic campaign to try to get us to change animal idioms. Like changing kill two birds with one stone to feed two birds with one scone. Yep, that's a real thing they tried to do. I won't get into the rest of them, because I don't want this video to be longer than 88 minutes. But what I really want is PETA to stop posing as a shelter. I want them to never physically touch another animal again. I want the state of Virginia to keep trying to close their shelter until it works. And suddenly, I kind of want a scone. But what do I know? I should probably just stick to comedy. Hey, you want to do kisses? If you enjoyed this video, check out my latest stick to comedy video right here. Subscribe to my YouTube channel here, and check out my live streams here. You can join my Patreon at patreon.com slash stevehofstetter, and see my live touring schedule on my website, stevehofstetter.com. Thanks for watching.